Okay, hello and welcome everyone. So in this video, I'm going to do a bundling example. And I'm gonna show an example where bundling works and then where it doesn't work. So this is in the context of a past exam question that I'd given, so, uh, so don't worry about this part, obviously. All right, so we have two consumers with known reservation prices for two goods, good A and good B. True or false, it's more profitable to sell the goods as a bundle, which is meaning like one price, for both of the goods sold jointly than it is to price them separately. Carefully explain by showing your work, use a marginal cost of 10 for both goods. Okay, so here's our consumers, consumer of type one, consumer of type two. We have good A and we have good B. Consumer of type one, these are their reservation prices. This means consumer of type one would pay $120 for good A and would pay $20 for good B. Consumer of type B would pay $90 for good A and would pay $30 for good B. So notice, consumer of type one has the high willingness to pay for good A. Consumer of type two has the high willingness to pay for good B. What this means is these preferences are negatively correlated. Since we have negatively correlated preferences, that's a good candidate for bundling being helpful. Also, we see the demands are fairly similar in that the willingness to pay for good A are pretty close together and the good willingness to pay for good B are pretty close together, at least relative to the difference. So here's a difference of $10, here's a difference of $30, but other things equal, those differences are small relative to the size of the, of, um, the demand of the willingness to pay for good A. Okay, so these are fairly similar demands and these are fairly similar uh, demands for the both goods, which means this is, and they have negatively correlated preferences, which gives us a situation where bundling is likely to be useful. And then I say, okay, well, what about instead if the type one consumer would pay $120 for good A, or $30 for good B, type two would pay $90 for good A, and $20 for good B. These are essentially the same willingness to pay, it's just that now the high willingness to pay is always ty our type one consumer. These would be positively correlated preferences. This is gonna be a situation, actually, if we answer the same question, is it more profitable to sell the good as a bundle than to price them separately? It's gonna be it's gonna be true for this one, the top one. It's gonna be false for my what if it instead example. Why? Well, here, actually, the pr pricing as a bundle or pricing separately are gonna give us the same profits. Okay, let's see why. So let me go ahead and I'll, I'll answer the first one first. We have our two customers. We got our reservation prices, as I discussed. Uh, we're gonna first determine what the profits will be if we price separately. So there's a couple different things you can do here. You could set the prices equal to the lowest of the two willingness to pay. If you do that, you'll be able to sell the good to both consumers. So that's what I've done first. For number one, I've said, let's set the price of good A equal to 90. Consumer of type one would have paid 120, but if we charge 120, we won't be able to sell to both consumers. So let's set it at a price of 90. If so, both consumers will buy. Our marginal cost was 10. And so let's see, this is gonna be 90 minus 10 is gonna be 80 times two is 160. It's gonna be my profits over good A. And then what about good B? If I set the price of 20, now consumer two would have paid up to 30. But if I set a price of 20, I can sell to both consumer of type one and type two. If so, this is the number of units I'm selling, two times 20 minus 10 is gonna be, well, two times 10 is 20. My total profits is gonna be $180. There's something else I could do. I could set the price equal to the higher of the two willingness to pays. So if I set the price of good A equal to 120, cool, but only good, only consumer type one is gonna buy. So I'm gonna sell one of those and I'm gonna make 110 in profits, okay? What about consumer of type, or what about for good B? Suppose I set that up to consumer of type B's willingness to pay, that's 30. They're the only ones gonna buy. Well, it turns out now my profits are gonna be 20 for good B. Overall, my profits are 130. So that's worse. Now there's some intermediate things I could do. I could set the price of good A equal to 90 and I could set the price of good B equal to 30. I could set the price of good A equal to 120 and the price of good B equal to 20, meaning I could set one equal to the maximal willingness to pay and one equal to the lower willingness to pay. So I'd sell one of the two goods to both and I'd sell the other good to only one of them. Well, looking at these numbers, we can see that's actually not gonna be more profitable than 180. When would that be a case that you would rather set at least one of them separate or maybe even price separately? When would it be a case that bundling is not gonna be useful? Well, if the demands were very different. So suppose, so look at what's happening here. It makes sense, it's actually better in this case 
if I'm pricing separately to set my price of each good, good A and B, equal to the smaller of these two willingness to pay. I sell it to both consumers and we're fine. So I'll get a, I'll get profits of 180. Where would this not work out well? Well, suppose, as I had said, demands were very different. So suppose rather than 120 was my willingness to pay for consumer A, suppose it was 120,000. Okay, now I'm definitely not gonna want to set the price of good A equal to 90 because I would give up considerably more than I am here. In that case, what would you wanna do? Well, you'd for sure wanna set the price all the way up to 120,000 if that's what this was. And then you'd get a situation where actually bundling wouldn't work so well. So the, the criteria for bundling working well is you have to have negatively correlated preferences, meaning that you've gotta have one consumer prefers is the has the has the higher willingness to pay for one of the goods and the other consumer has a higher willingness to pay for the other good and the other thing that you need is you need for the demands the willingness to pay is to be pretty similar you need their demands to be pretty similar they can't be a very large spread between the maximal willingness to pay for either of the goods for a consumer or between consumers one and two okay what happens with the bundle well what i've done is i've added this row to our column or <laughs> i've added this row to our column right uh, i've added a column to our table so what I've done is I've I summed over maximal willingness to pay, and I said, well, if consumer of type one would pay 120 for good A and 20 for good B, they would pay 140 to buy both jointly. So the price of the bundle that they would buy, or the maximal price for a bundle that they would purchase at, would be 140. The maximal price for a bundle that consumer of type two would buy at would be 120. Which price do I want to set? Well, if I set the bundle price of 140, I'll sell one bundle. My costs are going to be well. 10 for each good, and so my profits are gonna be, well, small relative to what I'm getting here. What if I set the price of the bundle equal to 140? Uh, sorry, equal to 120. That's exactly what I wanna do, because if the price of the bundle is 120, then I'm gonna be able to sell to both consumers, because consumer of type one, that's exactly their willingness to pay. Consumer of type two, there's a cushion of $20 between, uh, like $20 of consumer surplus if they per if consumers of type one purchase at the price of 120. And so I'll sell two bundles at the price of 120. My cost, remember the cost for both goods, uh, cost for each good or cost for both, I should say cost for each good is 10. So I'm gonna incur that cost twice, once for good A, once for good B, every time I sell a bundle. So my profits are gonna be 200. Here it's better to sell the bundle. What's going on? We have negatively correlated preferences. Okay, well, what about my other example where we said, suppose now consumer of type one always has our maximal willingness to pay. What I've done is I sw previously, the willingness to pay for type two consumer for good B was 30 and willingness to pay for type one consumer for good B was 20. I flipped these. So now type one consumer has the maximal, has the highest willingness to pay in both cases. What this affects is the bundle price. So if I sum up type one consumer would pay a max of 150 for the bundle. Type two consumer would pay a max of 110 for the bundle. Separate pricing, what's gonna happen then? It's gonna be exactly the same. So if I, so let me actually come back to the bundle in a second. If I price separately, I could set the price of good A equal to 90 and I could have both consumers buying. Good B equal to 20 and have both consumers buying, it's the same situation. If I price separately, that's what exactly what I wanna do and I'll get a maximal profits of 180. If I price, if I price, uh, if I set the prices all the way up to the maximal willingness to pay, I, I'm actually just ignoring my type two consumer. Could do that, then my profits are 130. And that's that's if I'm uh, if I'm pricing if I'm pricing separately. So I price uh, price separately. So what if I set the price of the bundle though? What if I what if I sell my what if I sell my bundle at uh, a price that both will buy? Okay, so the bundle price that I'm going to get them both to purchase at will be 110. Otherwise, if I set it at 150, I'm gonna sell one bundle and then my profits would be yeah, this 130 because it'd be the 150 that I'd sell the type one consumer minus the marginal cost of 10 for each good. So my profits would be 130. Or if I set my bundle price equal to 110, cool, I'll sell that twice, one to each, once to each consumer. Uh, every time I sell the bundle, I incur 20, so marginal cost of 10 for each good. And so my profits are gonna be two times 90 or 180. Ah, that's exactly the same. So here, if we have positively correlated preferences, it's not better to bundle. Positively correlated preferences, it's not harmful to bundle, it's just not useful. Right. So in order for bundling to be useful, we have to have negatively correlated preferences. One person has the high willingness to pay for one good, one person has a high willingness to pay for the other good, and the demands have to be fairly similar. So, Okay, I hope you liked the video.
See you next time.